So this cheeky little number, um, it's a cross, it's a hybrid of two flies. It's one I've been using for an awful long time. Um, I dare say other people have done it. I don't think this is my little secret, but um, I have used it for quite some time. It's one that, it's one that features really heavily in my box, whether it be for um, small still waters or large reservoirs. And it's basically a humongous uh, cross with a grizzle cut. Uh, famous Scottish, two famous Scottish patterns actually, but it's just a hybrid of both, black marabou tail, bit of silver, I'm going to tie one with gold because I've got a load of silvers, I'm going to tie this one with gold, but you do it with a silver tail or you do it with a gold tail, I prefer gold because it takes brownies as well, but yeah that's basically it, it's a hybrid of two flies and one that works extremely well, so let's go ahead and tie it shall we? The first thing I've done is I've got a, a tungsten bead on a Camazan B175 and the reason I've got that on there is because, well it's twofold really, it's it's a trigger obviously that colour but also at the same time because it's tungsten it's got a bit of weight so it moves, it ducks and dives in the water and that's, that's what I'm after. The thing I'm going to use is white. It wouldn't matter because it'll be tucked away behind the bead at the end. So we just come on and create a bit of tying thread. Like so. And I've got this stuff. This is a golden pearl flash given to me by my mate Paul Clydesdale. Thanks for that, Paul. It's a very generous hunk. And I'm just going to take like three or four strands for the main body of the flash. So I've got a really long hank there. I'll just show you. And I'm just gonna double it over so that's about six or eight inches. I'm just gonna double that over, roll it. So I've got about four inches there. Come in right up behind the bead. Tie in. Coming down to a point opposite the barb of the hook there. Well, people say, why are you not tying it a barbless? I just prefer barb to hook and I'm fishing for bigger fish. So now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to snip the tail so that overall I've probably got, I don't know, two. Two and a half inches there, two and a half inches of tail. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to come in with some really long marabou. I'm going to pinch about an inch and a half off of that feather. And the one thing that I haven't got, because I forgot to bloom and get it, is my feather. So all I've done is I've cut off the, the ends to create a straight line. Like so. Again, button it down with nice tight turns. And then I just make sure that I trim my, my tail so that my tail is the same length as the flash. So your marabou is the same length as the flash. We then come in um, maroon material, in this case silver wire, medium silver wire. You can use gold. It doesn't really matter actually because it's kind of hidden in the dressing. And then just park your, your rib out the way there. Then I've got this stuff. This is the original um, glow bright chenille. And this is number 11. And I've just taken some of the fibres away for the main core so that I can tie it in to create too much bulk and then just pull all your fibres away and create the body. Give yourself a little bit of space at the head and just tie that off. When you're dealing with chenilles or stuff like that, blade, far better. 
I'm not worried about this bit just now because this is all getting this is all I get tidied up. So the next thing I've got is a, a really hefty grizzle saddle. I'm gonna put myself quite a big feather because it looks better with a big feather. So I'm looking for something. Quite long. There you go, that's a kitty there. That's my feather there. As you can see, it's quite wide. I'm going to strip some of the, the flu away from my starting point. And just come in. And what I want to do here is I want to get two or three turns at the head. Like I say, I don't worry about this. This has got to get tied up. Now, I don't need hackle pliers because it's such a long feather. But just give it two to start off behind the weed. And then open turns. Two, three. And on my fourth, I'm going to catch that in on my wire. So just come in. On my fourth turn, catch that in. And then locking turns all the way up through the hackle. Let's helicopter that off there. With your thumb and forefinger, just push the fibres back, coax them back, just give them a wee rub. Like so. This should just ping off. Like that. Ready to tie another one. And then just to tidy up the fly, I've got some um, original glister in there. And again, this is a very similar colour. Very similar colour to the, the chenille that I'm using. Just a really, really thin rope. Really thin, very short, very, very tight. Like so. Tighten that up a little bit more. And then just a couple of turns. Force that hackle back. Like that. And then just to finish the fly, I stick a little bit of varnish. A little bit of varnish on the, the thread. And then whip finish, tucked it in behind the bead so it's not coming out. And that's your little grizzle humi. Um, you can pull some of these, some of the, the glister through. But just to finish off, I put a little bit of I stick a set of eyes on this. Just a little bit of bug bond or varnish or whatever. I'm just going to turn this so I can see what's going on. That is a bit bigger than I wanted, but you get the, the gist of it. And that's it. It goes all humi. It's a great fly. Um, one that works in still water, small and large. I really hope you enjoyed that, folks. If you did, please be kind enough to subscribe to my channel. Plenty more fly fishing on there and fly time. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.